you and today I want to start a brand new series on helping people who need divine healing. Now today I'm going to explain how I would go about it. Now I've had some experience and some success in helping people that really needed a miracle or been prayed for and been healed. But I've learned that, you know, if we just wait on God all the time just to do it sovereignly, all by himself, then, well, that's one of the reasons why many Christians are not healed today. We've got to learn how, how important it is for God, you know, to speak what he says to us in regards to how we respond, uh, how we go after it, uh, how we pray, how we talk to God. And I want to use today as a subject uh, the story of Nahum in 2 Kings chapter 5. And you can research this on your own. But the very first step that I would take if I know somebody needs divine healing is to work on their attitude. I want to make sure that they're going to stay humble, receptive, open-hearted to what God has to say about his experience. And, and the story of Nahum is really a, a kind of a very important story to really help illustrate what I'm talking about. Nahum was the commander-in-chief of the army of Syria. He was right under the king of, of Syria, and he was well-liked. He was even favored of God. And he had a little Jewish girl that, was, uh, that lived in his house and, and served his, uh, his wife. And he was everything you could think of, just robust and powerful and mighty and successful, but he was leprous. He was a leper. His skin was diseased. And uh, when he came home, the, the little Jewish girl saw his situation. She said, oh, I wish that he was in and knew the prophet of God, knew there was a prophet of God in, in Samaria. And so her words stirred up the family of, of Nahum. And then they went to the king. And the king, who loved him so much, decided to write a letter to the king of Israel. And there he made the request to the king. And the king, of course, responded by saying, who does this guy think I am? I'm God. I'm not God. I can't help people do this and that way. I can't raise people from the dead and all that stuff. And he got threatened by it. He ripped off his clothes because he thought that the king of uh, Syria was going to be trying to start a war with him. And uh, word got out to the prophet Elisha. And Elisha heard that the king of Israel was all upset. So he goes and informs him and says, what, what is it? And he says, well, the king of Syria says his commander in chief, Nam, is needing healing and he was asking for me and he said well you tell him to come to me and so finally Nahum is sent to the prophet Elijah to his very house comes to the door and the prophet Elijah who was Jewish obviously against the Syrian he refused to come to the door and speak to him directly instead he just told his servants to tell Nahum go wash yourself in the river Jordan seven times and you'll be healed well the servants told him that and Nahum very proud man you know, got very angry, walked away with rage and anger, and he was very upset. And one of his arguments was, aren't there these two rivers by Damascus that's close by that the water is much cleaner than the Jordan River? And, uh, um, and, and he said, well, you know, he just was in a rage. And finally, some of his servants came over and helped him out a little bit, helped him to humble him and get him to be in a receptive mood by asking him, if the prophet Elijah had asked you to do some hard thing, wouldn't you have done it? How hard is it for you to go to the Jordan and wash yourself, humble yourself in that water seven times? And so he decided to do it, and he responded to it. And, of course, he came up clean and completely healed. Now, the thing I want you to understand is God is always looking for your attitude. Again, the very first thing we've got to have is a healthy attitude. And when I say an attitude, I'm not talking about an attitude of, uh, you know, que sera, sera, whatever comes my way, whatever happens, you know, I'll leave it in the hands of God. No, we've got to learn to go after it. And we've got to understand sometimes God has to humble us. He is waiting for us to humble us under his mighty hand, believing and knowing that he is all powerful and he is almighty. He had, the, the, Nahum had to go to the prophet uh, Elijah. He had to become humble. He had to become receptive and he had to become open hearted. His pride held him back for a little bit. But another point I think that's very interesting, and I think that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this series, is again, how to help someone that needs divine healing. Well, Nahum never went after this thing himself. He was powerful, mighty, glorified in all these different ways, favored with God and man, but he was leprous and he never sought God for healing. It didn't make that much of a difference apparently to him, but there was this one little Jewish girl that cared enough to say, oh, if he would only go to the right place, to the right resources. Secondly, his wife, his family, then even the king went to bat for him, and then even his friends went to bat for him. And they were 
part of the process of, of bringing him into that right attitude so that he could receive the miracle. And you know, he did receive that miracle. And when he came back, he came back wanting to bless the, the prophet of God. And the prophet of God said it was all free. And you know, that's another thing that we need to understand. Your healing, if you need healing or you know somebody that's, that needs to be healed, you need to let them know it's a free gift from God. He wants you to have it. He's blessed by you being able to receive it. But let's not think that you're going to receive anything of the Lord if you don't come by faith. The attitude is not, well, I'll just let God do it. And if he does it, he does it. If he doesn't, he doesn't. God is looking for people who will go after it. And there are many examples about that. And if you know somebody that won't go after it, maybe you and I need to go after it for them until they get into that right attitude. Amen. You have a great day and God bless you.